Hi guys, Viking Reefing here. If you follow me on Instagram or you've seen my couple of previous videos, I've mentioned that I would be getting a new light fixture. Um, I've now had this guy, the Giesman Aurora V12, for about three weeks. So I can at least give you guys my initial impressions of it. Full disclosure, I was given this fixture to test out by Giesman. Uh, but um, this won't color my uh, impressions of it, really. Um, just so you guys know, I'm a huge Giesman fan. Um, I've ran some halides from them in the past, uh, like 10 or 15 years ago. I've had the Giesman Aurora V4, um, the V8, and now the V12. So obviously, I like the brand, um, and I've bought... Giesman fixtures for my own man in the past as well. And the overall impressions of this guy is that it really lives up to uh, what Giesman stands for, in my, my opinion. Uh, unparalleled craftsmanship and really sleek looking fixtures that has a very high wife approval factor. One interesting tidbit about this fixture is that this is actually the first full LED fixture I've ever run. Well, that's not completely true. I ran some, I believe it was max spec uh, fixtures, say seven or eight years ago, and I had a completely horrible time with an all LED setup back then. So I haven't really touched any LED fixtures since then. I've always run a um, T5 LED hybrid since uh, I thought, well, LED is really wasn't to the point that I felt comfortable with using them over my reef tank, which is predominantly SPS. When Giesman contacted me about trying out this fixture, I was first kind of hesitant uh, due to my previous experience with LEDs. But when I did delve a bit deeper into it, I think they really hit it out of the park with this one in terms of the LED layout and uh, the overall uh, design of it because it has both diffuse sections with fairly low powered LEDs and focus bucks. And I'll show these guys uh, close up in a bit. And this is basically uh, what I think the gold standard is. Um, the gold standard has always been T5s and metal halides uh, because it both gives you that very diffuse light and it gives you the very focused light that kind of mimics the sun because the corals in the wild are illuminated both by a very harsh spotlight from the sun and the sky provides the diffused light. So I've always thought that that was the best way to illuminate your reef tank as well. There hasn't been any options to do this on the market before the, uh, the Aurora V12 came out. Uh, you could also you could obviously do some hybrid uh, varieties. For example, you could use some strip lights, um, for example, castles or something um, in the middle. That would kind of mimic uh, what this guy is doing, but uh, that really doesn't re look too aesthetically appealing to my eyes. Uh, there's a bunch of fixtures, there's a bunch of cords and all that, and I want my tags to be as minimalistic and sleek as possible. If you're looking at other light fixtures that are on the market, you can generally just pick between very focused light, for example, castles, orfex, and things of that nature, or you can go the diffuse route, which a lot of uh, manufacturers have done recently. Um, I'm thinking about the Neptune Sky, um, the um, ATA Stratons, and the Philips Coral Cares. But neither of those really, you, you just get like one of the unique selling points. The fused ones, you get the fused lighting, but you don't get that really focused lighting that provides harsher shimmer lines and aesthetically pleasing light. Uh, it kind of just looks like T5s. Or you can go with the puck varieties that just gives the very focused light. But in my opinion, for at least for SPS, that leads to too much shadowing and things of that nature going on. Um, and I found when you have large colonies, you always get some issues with uh, die off and things of that nature. If you um, have a uh, very 
direct light, so to speak. So I was uh, very pleased when I um, saw the layout on this guy. Oh, sorry, my old Aurora V8. It had five focus pucks and eight 80 watt T5s, which amounted to about 1,100 watts of full power. Uh, this guy, I opted for the uh, additional power here on the diffuse sections, a total of 740 watts. And we've got an energy crisis going on here in Sweden. Um, energy prices are skyrocketing all across Europe, obviously. So to be able to decrease your um, energy expenditure is always very welcome. What I also find with this uh, fixture is that it really does just what I hoped that it would. It gives the uh, very diffused light that I'm used to from T5s due to the two diffuse sections here. And it really illuminates my entire tank. And you get these spotlights, which provides these, this nice shimmer. It's um, quite an expensive unit if you just look at the unit price. I believe the one I have here with some addition, additional bells and whistles on it retails for around a bit over 2,000 euros, which might seem like a lot. But keep in mind, this tank is 2 meters by 80 by 65, and one single fixture is illuminating the entirety of this tank. Um, if you look at other premium light manufacturers, you would probably need somewhere between four and six units to light this tank, which would be a heck of a lot more expensive than just this unit, even though their unit price is slightly lower. I did some part testing with an uh, Apogee PAR meter today, uh, and I got some very interesting results. For example, up here on this pink millipora, uh, when I'm running it, it at well, the maximum output of my light schedule, uh, which is basically almost every channel uh, at 100%, I do turn down the white somewhat and the greens and the reds. Uh, but I get about 500 par here, just on top of that coral. If you go down slightly lower, so the midpoint of the tank, uh, I get around 380 par. And on the sand bed, I had mm, just about between 250 and 280 par throughout the tank. And what was also very impressive was that it was very unison. So if, if I took the par meter, put it down here in the bottom in the center, I basically got the same results as if I put it over here. So that was very nice. It's now been going for the entirety of the day. And it's, I wouldn't even say that it's warm. It's uh, not, you can keep your hand on here. Um, there's hardly any heat whatsoever, so that's very, uh, very cool. And the entirety of the housing is made of uh, aluminum powder-coated, so the entire fixture basically acts as a uh, heat sink. And you also have a couple of fans up here for additional cooling. Um, even though I run this fixture at the maximum output for a uh, Fair amount of the day, I still haven't heard those fans come on. But I, they might have come on, um, and they might just be very, very quiet. I'm not sure. If we take a closer look, oh, that was nasty flashing. Let's see if we look here. Oh, anyways, so. What you basically got over here is that you've got two very long strip lights that goes all the way across the fixture right here. And you always have this diffuse panel. Let's see if we can see inside of them here. Here you go. And then you got the focused sections here with lenses on them to provide that 
nice shimmer that you see. Uh, since I have the extension modules on the sides here, there are two cords because you need an external power supply in that case. Uh, so it's that thicker one. Um, but if you're only running it uh, as a stock model, so to speak, you only have one cord going from the fixture. Giesman released a new app about a little over a year ago, ago called uh, Link, uh, which you can find in the App Store. Ah, and I have a new Moorish Idol, the, uh, as you can see. The Achilles is slightly aggressive towards it, but the aggression has calmed down quite a lot. So I don't really see that as a big issue. It should be fine in a couple of days. But as I said, the app is called Link. I'll open it here on my phone and show you. And here you basically program your Giesman lights, all the newer versions of them. It's a fairly simple app. You basically do a um, time program throughout the day um, with different set points. And if we go into one here, you can see that we've got nine, nine different color channels. The top ones are for the focus sections. And the bottom three are for the diffuse sections. As you can see, you can also overdrive the LEDs. Uh, you can bring them up to 120% power, uh, which I do run uh, some of the um, channels on for a large part of the day, uh, just to get more oomph. Once you've uh, made a program that you like, you basically just it upload program and it uploads it to the fixture and it will start running instantly. There are the possibilities of programming moonlighting, um, also thunderstorms, clouds and things of that nature. I've ne never really found that to be too useful to be honest. Moonlighting might be a good idea if you're trying to get like cores to spawn or something like that. But it's not something that I generally use on my uh, reef tanks. I find that clouds and things of that nature rather startles the fish. So yeah, I stay away from that. If you have a buddy who also runs a V12, for example, or any other of the uh, newer Giesman lights, and you like their light schedule, you can also share your light schedules with them, uh, either, either on email or over WhatsApp. and. Uh, other file sharing uh, programs. One thing to keep in mind is that this is a relatively heavy fixture. I have the um, 150 centimeter unit and it weighs uh, about, I believe, 15 or 18 kilos. Um, and they need to be suspended from above. So you need to have a fairly sturdy uh, ceiling to be able to do that. My ceiling. It's concrete, luckily, so I could probably suspend a car from this. To my knowledge, there are no uh, st uh, tank stands available for these, at least not through Giesman. I've seen some people make tank stands for them, um, so there seems to be a possibility to do that, but I'm not exactly sure how that works. One gripe I had with my old V8 was that it was kind of a pain in the ass to change the bulbs because you had to unscrew this entire side plate to get out the bulbs uh, because you need to slide out the protective uh, covers, obviously. Uh, but that's not a problem with this one since you really shouldn't be, have to replace your LEDs all that often. Giesman is actually very good at producing spare parts for their fixtures. So if something were to break, they generally have that in stock. And they, I know that they uh, stock stuff for very old models as well, which is kind of impressive. I know that uh, I had a problem 
buddy who had a problem with a uh, Giesman V4 a while back, and they still stocked spare parts for that one, which I really think is a positive when the manufacturers take care of their customers after they've actually bought a product from them. So to summarize uh, my thoughts about this fixture, I think they really did knock it out of the park with this one. Um, I'm super happy with it. It really does everything that I want a flex fixture to do on my reef tank. I think that this will probably be what most LED fixtures will look like in the future uh, with both the diffuse sections and the focal sections. I can't see why anyone would want anything else but this kind of a layout, um, honestly. It, it looks great, um, but I wouldn't expect anything less from Giesman. Uh, they've all, always produced very nice fixtures. And since I put it on, I've seen, seen a fairly uh, remarkable uh, increase in my alkalinity consumption in this tank, uh, which I'm very impressed with. My initial thoughts was that if this was anything like T5s and, uh, or the T5 LED hybrids I ran in the past, I would be very happy. Uh, but this actually seems to suppress that. Um, so I've actually been struggling for the cause like last week or two uh, to keep up with the alkalinity consumption since uh, none of this fixture over the tank, which is very impressive. I also think you get a very nice color uh, in your tank. Um, Especially if you're like me, who likes a slightly more natural look. I'm not at all into the Windexy kind of tanks. Um, that's not really for me. I think it really shows off the color of the corals in a great way uh, without oversaturating them. Um, are there any downsides to this? Well, if you're really into that blue look, this probably isn't a fixture for you. I mean, you can run it extremely blue if you want, and you get that insane pop and everything just looks like a disco. Um, that's completely possible to do. Uh, however, since this is geared more towards a more balanced spectrum, I think that you would be sacrificing quite a lot of par to achieve that. Um, so that's basically the only person or the only reefer that I wouldn't recommend this fixture to if you really like a very, very blue tank. Um, other than that, um, in my opinion, this is probably the best, best fixture in the market uh, in terms of uh, lighting layout, uh, overall looks, and price points. Um, even if you want the fairly cheap LEDs, uh, I would have a hard time seeing that you could illuminate this size of a tank uh, for this price. And there are also smaller models. So there's a 90 centimeter one, there's a 120 centimeter one, and this 150 that I'm using. I was actually uh, initially thinking that I would probably be doing two 90 centimeter fixtures to get more, even more spread, but I'm uh, fairly certain that I'll stick with this because uh, it illuminates my entire tank fine, and I have the I don't have to deal with more cords and things of that nature. If you have any questions, uh, please post them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, please like, comment and subscribe if you think I've earned it. And one additional thing that I would like to mention is that depending on when you're seeing this video, they, these things might not be on the market yet. I think they will launch at the very end of March. Um, so uh, this is the 11th of March, so they're probably not on the market just quite yet. Um, but if not, they'll be uh, available soon enough, and I think they're open for pre-orders at this point. I'm not entirely sure if they have distribution for these guys in the US yet, but... I would suspect that the US will be at least like a month or something behind Europe. I hope you liked this review. If you have any 
anything that you think I've missed or anything like that, also post that down below. Thank you for watching. Happy weaving and have a good one. Bye.